Seth, we're both at this FQXI conference again, and if a tree falls, you know, what's the physics of what really happens? That's what we're talking about today. And the concept of events is a critical, uh, central part of what we're talking about in quantum physics and in uh, general relativity. And I understand generally what the points are in relativity. It's the point in four-dimensional space-time uh, that events occur, and in General, and in quantum mechanics, it's the wave function of probabilities. Uh, but going beyond that, what, what, what do we learn? What, what, what does the concept of event help us in either uh, uh, in deeply understanding uh, I've, these two great theories? Yeah, well, the notion of an event, an event just means coming out. It means something happens. Now, if you like look at that closely, it's not really clear what it means. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so in, in general relativity, uh, the idea of an event is something like a clock ticks or a GPS satellite sends out a signal yeah. or another yeah. GPS satellite receives the signal and compares it with its internal clock. By the way, do you know who invented GPS? Oh. Well, some say DARPA because DARPA actually okay. constructed GPS, but it was actually Einstein who oh. invented GPS. Oh. And Einstein <clears throat> invented GPS because it was his idea of figuring out how you measure the geometry of space and time. He said, imagine we have a bunch of clocks that are falling yeah, yeah, inertially yeah. through space and that they're sending out signals that say when this signal left this clock from its internal clock and then the other clock gets the signal and says, when did this signal arrive? And by putting together these times of departure and times of arrival and counting the numbers of ticks of the uh, clocks, uh, then you can map out space and time. Uh, so Einstein yeah. had this very uh, precise notion of an event in a classical framework of a clock ticking or a detector clicking or a signal being emitted. <clears throat> and from that, you can actually deduce the geometry of space and time. It's kind of like a, a computation whose purpose is to reveal space-time geometry. Mm. Well, we've proven that it's a necessity because if without calculations from general relativity, uh, we would be off by many meters in terms of GPS. Absolutely, yeah. And, and without GPS, I couldn't find my way home from my office. <laughs> yeah. right? Well, actually, I think I probably could. <laughs> People managed to do that for decades, millions of years. <laughs> yeah, so, so now the uh, problem is in quantum mechanics, quantum mechanics has a different notion of an event. And actually, in quantum mechanics, the notion of an event is more problematic. <clears throat> in quantum mechanics, you know, you have a a, a wave function that's mm. evolving. You have a notion of electron moving from here to here. Or for instance, you have an electron that um, is an excited state in an atom and it falls down into the ground state and emits a photon. This could, for instance, be how a signal is emitted from one clock to go mm. to another clock. And these questions of just when this happens and how this happens are more problematic in quantum mechanics. Sure, I understand, but but therefore, I, you know, a, a simplistic approach would say that you're just using the the word, the English word "event" to describe two separate things. You should, if you want to be more precise, you should call make up two different names to describe two different things. So by using the same English word, we're just confusing ourselves. Yeah, I actually think I agree. I mean, you know. Uh, English language is, is not very well adapted to describing science. I mean, I actually have a master's degree in philosophy from Cambridge, and every week I'd go to the philosophy seminar, and some guy would get up and say, blah, 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 blah. And then another guy would get up, pound the table, and say, no, the truth is blah, 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 blah. And I would go, hold it, blah, 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 blah. It's exactly the same thing. That's why I didn't become a philosopher. <laughs> so I think the mathematical equations are a better way to describe it. And of course, you can have you can look at the quantum mechanics of clocks ticking and of signals being sent off and of measuring time of arrival of signals. This is a fascinating branch of quantum mechanics. So, you know, the quantum mechanics of GPS is actually a very beautiful branch of quantum yeah. mechanics and responsible for very practical things. The most accurate measurement instrument in the world is Dave Wineland's quantum logic atomic clock that uses quantum computation to divide out time to an accuracy that's a million times more accurate wow. than it's ever been parsed out before. Now, how does that work? Because the way I remember the clocks, CCM atoms, the, 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 the cycles, uh, uh, but how, how does a quantum calculation change the, uh, the uh, or increase the sophistication 
of the uh, accuracy. So old style quantum clocks, like cesium quantum clocks, use a, a microwave transition. So you can think of something going around yeah, like this right. at microwave speeds, which is you know, 10 billion times of a second. I'm not yeah. gonna do that because it would be very messy. Yeah. Now, to get things more accurate, you'd like to use an optical transition. So optical transitions go much, 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 much faster. They go a million times more fast than, yeah. the, than the microwave uh -huh. transitions. So what you'd like to do is keep track of how many times this, this optical transition goes fat around. And you have this one going around fast, uh -huh. and this, this one going around fast, and this one going around more slowly. I'm, I didn't practice this beforehand. <laughs> and so what you do is you entangle these two transitions. Oh, you wow, do wow. a quantum logic operation between the microwave and the optical. And by doing that, you can use the slower, but it's still very accurate microwave transition to count the number of optical transitions. Wow, but you need to use this intrinsically quantum mechanical effective entanglement to make it happen. Wow, that's amazing. So it that's, is. Yeah, <laughs> it really is startling. It is amazing, yeah. And, and, yeah. and so that, that's a, an example of, of, of an event in, in quantum mechanics. Uh, that you can, uh, a way of thinking about the nature of events. Right, I mean, you, you, uh, the tick of a clock, a clock moving from one state to another, is an event. I mean, that's kind of, and it's the archetypical event in general relativity where you need to have clocks to map out the structure of space-time. You know, clocks moving through space, ticking out time as they go, are measuring the so-called proper time along their path. And this is a key feature in, in the metric for space-time, measuring the geometry. Are there controversies about the nature of events? Oh, for sure. <laughs> like what? Well, <clears throat> I think classically it's not really so controversial. I mean, because classically you just say, okay, the clock ticked. Um, in, in quantum mechanics, it's not so easy because, um, you know, a clock, uh, again, in quantum mechanics, there's waves, you know, there's a wave, let's say that the second hand of the clock, there's a wave that corresponds to the position of the second hand, and there's a wave that corresponds to the second hand here, mm -hmm. there's another wave that corresponds to the second hand there, but unfortunately, you often have waves where the second hand is here and there at the same time, so it's not, you know, uh, unambiguous when the event has happened. Hmm. In fact, it's, it is yeah. ambiguous when an event has happened. And does that help us understand the nature of events more? The ambiguity? Yeah, I think the understanding that- If what that's reality. Yeah, if, if events, yeah. my feeling about this is like in quantum mechanics, it's ambiguous when an event occurs, so let's just suck it up, right? right. You know, it's like, you know, that's just the way it is. We've got to, to accept that. Um, and in fact, this, uh, uh, my uh, collaborators and I have spent a long time just trying to work out the quantum mechanics of space and time via looking at the quantum mechanics of GPS. And I think that's a good way to go.